Recently, I've been thinking a lot about the future of consumer tech, because right now we're pretty much just staring at rectangles all day. Whether it's our phone or a laptop, whatever it may be, it's pretty much the same form factor. And the way things are going, we're slowly seeing more and more wearables coming into the world and definitely more practical ones than we've ever seen before. And I completely get it. Like I'm a big user of smart glasses myself. The only problem I see is there's just this constant growing gap between VR headsets that are bigger, packed with more tech, more features, and lighter, smaller glasses, which are packed with even less. Like you either choose to go for a big headset that does everything, or you go for something small and lightweight that barely does anything. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been using these. So these are the Inmo Air 3. Now these are definitely absolute units. Like these things are a little bit chunky than your standard glasses, but are they so ridiculous when you compare it to something like the Vision Pro? A lot of other headsets coming out right now are just a lot bigger and less practical and even tethered like the Vision Pro. And these are completely standalone and wireless. So I feel like they're actually more practical than people think. Okay, so full disclosure, these aren't out yet. They're on Kickstarter right now. Earlier bird price is $899 USD. They retail around $1,099. And I know what you're thinking, like why do I even need AR glasses? But here's the thing. I fly a lot, I work from cafes, I'm always pretty much on the go, moving around, going to events, and I'm kind of tired of just hunching over my phone for hours. So Inmo reached out to me, they're like, hey, you wanna try these? And of course, I wanna try them because it's a new piece of tech and they look pretty interesting. So let's wind the clocks back and start from the unboxing and just talk about what we actually get inside. So you have this premium magnetic origami box and inside you get the ring, you get the glasses with the glasses case, as well as the sunglasses attachment. And you also get this small touchpad controller. And then in this origami style case, you have the glasses themselves. And something nice is the box actually folds completely flat. So when you are storing it away, it doesn't take up too much space. One of the main differences with interacting with these glasses is it comes with a ring. So the ring basically controls everything and it does work as a touchpad. On the top, there's this touchpad area where you can go ahead and swipe, tap and scroll and even control a cursor on the screen. And there's also a little button you can click to select things. And I can totally understand why they did this because you're not fumbling around for a remote control. You're not gonna lose it down any seats or if you fall asleep on a plane and you're not reaching to touch the frames themselves, mostly. There is a couple buttons on there such as power and volume, but primarily you're interacting with the ring. Something pretty interesting is the way these work is quite a bit different to other glasses of the same form factor. So rather than screens above with some angled mirrors, these actually have these new waveguide displays. So if you look closely in the lenses, you'll see those lines going vertically in the center. That's the waveguide display and it's built into the glass itself. And from my understanding, this is the first time someone's actually done full color waveguide at this brightness and this resolution. So these are 1080p panels. They get up to 600 nits of brightness, which is definitely plenty bright for outside. And they do come with this nice magnetic sunshade attachment you can clip on and that just turns them into sunglasses. But when you are wearing them, they're actually really well balanced. There's a lot of weight in the back, so it counterbalances the front weight. And they're overall pretty lightweight at 135 grams. So you can wear them for long periods of time without even noticing they're on. They really do just feel like a regular pair of glasses. Now, if you are like a smaller build person, maybe you're a girl, I feel like these definitely would be quite large on your head. It's just something to consider. But for me and my size, I feel like they're actually a pretty great fit. Now I have worn these out and about and you do get a slight reaction from wearing them. You just get a lot of stares in general and not in a bad way, but more in a curious way because these just look very sci-fi and like people's eyes are just automatically drawn to them because they're curious because they're curious if you're watching content, if you're maybe recording because there is a camera in the middle here, which is a 16 megapixel camera that shoots vertical video. And so you kind of just have to look past that. Like you're trying something new, people are gonna look for sure. But I actually really like the camera placement being in the middle because you don't get that weird offside angle that you get on a lot of others which have the camera on the side. From the outside perspective, you can definitely tell there's something a little bit different about the lenses because you do see those lines, especially under light, you can definitely tell something's going on. But the displays are actually made by Sony and they're OLED panels. So the quality is definitely there and they have a 36 degree field of view. So there's actually quite a lot of coverage in the space. Like it's not fully immersive. It is just windowed within the lenses themselves. So obviously it's not all around you like on a VR headset. So these are AR glasses, augmented reality. I honestly found my favorite thing about these was you can go ahead and watch content without being tethered and they're standalone. They actually have a Snapdragon XR processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty crazy for a pair of glasses. 
and 128 gigabytes of storage. But yeah, these run full-fledged Android 14. So it is standalone. You don't need your phone. You don't need any computer. Everything's completely on board. Now, because this is a slightly older version of Android, it's just something to consider. You're going to be lacking some features in some areas and certain support for software on Android 16. But I'd say 90% of things work on Android 14, which is good to see. And like I mentioned earlier, the main way you're interacting and controlling the glasses is through the ring. You do get this on-screen cursor, which can actually follow your movement of your hand or you can interact with using the touchpad. But it also comes with a separate touchpad controller you can use. And I guess this just gives you a little bit more surface area to interact. And it's just a different way of controlling it if you want this option over the ring. But the ring's just a lot more convenient for just bringing it around with you. You can just slip it in your pocket and it doesn't really take up much space. And it's just really easy to use. And I find I don't really lose it because I keep it on my hand. I think it's a little bit more natural. But I guess most of you know what you're getting from these. The whole concept and idea is you're getting a giant virtual screen floating in front of you in your field of view. But because these are augmented reality, you can obviously still see the real world behind that. So it's almost like having transparency mode on a pair of headphones, whereas VR headsets are more like noise cancellation. But for traveling on the go, these are incredible. Like if you're in a plane, train, in the back of a car, just having a 150 inch screen appear in front of you really does scream the future. And it's great for consuming content like YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, all of that is native on these and you can even game on these glasses by pairing up a controller. But gaming's actually been really fun, the quality is really good and it's nice just to actually look up and not down when you are gaming on your phone. I think it just gives you some neck relief and it's just a more comfortable position to sit in. But the fact you can pair other peripherals like a controller, mouse, keyboard, it really enhances the experience of what these glasses can offer. And it feels much more like a productivity tool. Like you could pair up a mouse and keyboard and actually use this like a miniature computer on your face. Now paired up with those screens is some really decent speakers. They get decently loud. There is a lot of sound leaks, so people on the outside can hear if you do have it cranked up pretty loud. But yeah, there's a speaker in each side as well as four microphones. So you could even do things like video calls on these, no problem. In terms of the battery they managed to fit in here, it is only a 660 milliamp power cell, but it lasts seven hours of standby time, three hours of music, and about 1.5 hours of video watching. So you can pretty much watch a full movie wearing these, but they do charge from zero to 60% in just 30 minutes. Now, something that really did sell it to me was the support screen mirroring built in. And so from my MacBook, I was able to cast my screen to the glasses and suddenly I've got my laptop and all my computer real estate but in a private floating window on my face. And so if you're working on a train or on a flight, nobody else can see what you're working on. And this is where it really stopped feeling like a toy for me and it started feeling like a more useful productivity tool that I can actually see myself using. Just going back to the camera, the quality is actually pretty decent. It's 16 megapixels. It's definitely not replacing my phone, that's for sure. But just for quick POV clips, quick vlogs, B-roll shots, anything for my like Instagram stories, I feel like it's actually really solid. Something pretty nice is they also support prescriptions, so you can actually get prescription lenses fitted in behind the displays, and that just allows everyone to use them. But I guess they're not for everyone, so who are these for exactly? And I definitely feel like these are for early adopters. If you are a person that travels a lot, maybe you work remote, you want something quite lightweight and you don't really have a demanding setup for work, then these are great if you want to keep it private and just wear it on your face. They're a nice alternative, but I feel like you're still going to need a laptop or another device as well. It's more just for those times where you feel like switching it up a little bit. So like I mentioned, the price on Kickstarter right now is $8.99. I'll leave a link and all the details down below. They're definitely not cheap, but compared to other standalone AR glasses, they're actually pretty competitive. But for me, this feels almost like the first step of the midpoint between AR and VR. I feel like it sort of closes that gap. Also quick note for the devs, but they've got a Unity SDK and an AI agent platform. So if you're building AR apps, these aren't just consumer products, you can actually develop on them. So yeah, do let me know if there's anything in particular you wanna know about these glasses. I did try cover everything that I've kind of noticed about them and my experience from them. But yeah, if there's anything else, do let me know in the comment section down below and just let me know what you think about them. Would you pick these up or are you going to wait until like, you know, a couple of years in the future where things are just a lot more slimmed down and a lot more practical and also a lot cheaper as well? I personally am an early adopter. I just like trying things before it's mainstream because I just feel like it's more fun. And also some things might not even make it to mainstream, so you might as well try it while you can. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.